Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to Erlene Dow. Erlene, you may begin. Thank you, Greg. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the November Local Employment Dynamics or LED webinar. On behalf of the U.S. Census Bureau and the LED Partnership, in collaboration with the Council for Community and Economic Research and the Labor Market Information Institute, it is my pleasure to welcome Moises Yi as he presents first quarterly workforce indicators for Puerto Rico provide demographic portrait of islands employment trends. In late September, the U.S. Census Bureau released the first quarterly workforce indicators, or better known as QWI, for Puerto Rico, providing rich demographic profiles of the island's employment. According to Yee's findings, the youngest and oldest workers drove Puerto Rico's employment recovery after Hurricane Maria devastated the islands five years ago. This research looks at the recovery through 2019 before the COVID-19 pandemic affected the employment across the nation. Moises Yi is an economist in the Center for Economic Studies Longitudinal Employer Household Dynamics Research Group. Yi's primary interest is, is in labor economics topics at the intersection of trace and urban economics. His current research focuses on worker mobility and labor market adjustments in response to trade liberalization. In addition, Yi is interested in topics related to worker reallocation, inequality, and productivity allogomerations spillovers. Yi received his PhD in economics from the University of California, Berkeley in 2016. With that, I welcome Moises. Great. Well, uh, thank you, Arlene, and thank you, everyone, for attending. I'm, I am very excited to be presenting this new analysis on Puerto Rico employment trends after Hurricane Maria, which is uh, an analysis based on uh, new Puerto Rico QWI data that, as Arlene said, we recently released uh, only two months ago. Um, I need to give the standard disclaimer that all the opinions and conclusions expressed here in this presentation are my own and do not represent the views of the Census Bureau. And as you'll see in a couple of slides, I'm also going to be showing you that all of the tables and figures in these presentations are based on data that is publicly available. Um, so let me give you a, a little bit of background first. Uh, as most of you in the audience know, uh, LEHD produces a series of data products of which QWI or quarterly workforce indicators is one. What a lot of you might not know is that uh, we recently expanded the QWI series to include uh, Puerto Rico, right? And QWI is uh, an ideal data product because it allows for a timely uh, analysis of, of trends uh, around or before and after major events, and that's how I'm going to be using QWI in this presentation to look at what happened before and after Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. QWI is also unique in that it allows uh, for uh, simultaneous stratification uh, of characteristics, uh, not only of employers, like for example, industries, but also workers, for example, demographics, and as you see in a couple of slides, uh, allowing for the simultaneous stratification uh, um, gives us some uh, very important insights into what is driving overall uh, employment trends. As of today, uh, QWI for Puerto Rico includes data up to the first quarter of uh, 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 2022. Uh, but of course, this data, like data for all the uh, uh, other partners and states, is uh, updated regularly, and usually there's a three-quarter lag uh, between uh, the current date and, uh, and the uh, last date of uh, data that we have. All right, so I'm going to be talking about employment trends after Hurricane Maria. Let me just give you some brief context that everyone in the audience would know. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico um, back in uh, 2017, September to be exact and it caused uh, widespread devastation, right? Like at least uh, almost 3,000 deaths, uh, billions of dollars in physical damage, widespread uh, 
blackouts, and so on. What is also relatively well known is that it, it uh, resulted in a sharp decline in private sector employment um, uh, immediately after the hurricane, and also a, a, an increase in net out migration from the island, uh, mostly to the uh, continental US. And both of these trends were partly reversed uh, the following year. So we're going to be using QWI data to expand on these uh, uh, well-known facts to provide uh, an analysis at the quarterly level that takes advantage also of the fact that relative to other sources, we have information on the industry and also demographic characteristics of workers. Um, now, let me just uh, give you a brief uh, outline of how I'm going to be using QWI data to study uh, uh, what happened uh, after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico on the third quarter of 2017. And we're going to be looking at the recovery through uh, 2019. Like Erlene said, we don't want to go past 2019 because uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, had significant employment uh, effects across the nation, not only in Puerto Rico. And for the purposes of this analysis, I'm going to be using uh, employment figures based on what we call uh, beginning of quarter employment. Why do we do that? Well, a quick refresher. Uh, QWI data comes from UI records, and these records are at the quarter level. So that means that if I'm employed for a month uh, in, within one quarter and unemployed for the other two months, then I'm going to show up as employed in that quarter, but we don't know exactly you know, uh, if I was unemployed for most of that time or employed for most of the time. So what we care usually uh, when we look at employment figures is to have a, 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 a good measure of the stock of employment at a particular point in time. And that's where this beginning of the quarter definition comes through. By the way, all this information is available on the QWI Explorer uh, 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 information uh, document. And so um, what we're going to do is uh, to construct beginning of the quarter employment uh, is look at whether workers had positive earnings on either side of a, a quarterly boundary, like the previous quarter and the quarter of reference. So let me give you a, a concrete example of that. Let's say that we want a beginning of, of the quarter employment for reference quarter T. Uh, we are only going to include workers who had positive earnings in the previous quarter, T minus one, and in the quarter of reference so again, a concrete example, uh, uh, the fourth quarter of 2017 starts in October 1st of that year, right? If we want to be counted uh, in this beginning of the quarter employment for the fourth quarter of 2017, then a worker would need to have positive earning, earnings both in the third quarter of 2017 and in the uh, fourth quarter of that year. Right? So these are going to be the measures that we are going to be uh, using throughout uh, this talk, uh, beginning of the quarter employment. Now let me give you an outline of how I use these measures to uh, conduct different types of analysis uh, and sets of results. I'm going to start by giving you some baseline employment characteristics of uh, uh, the Puerto Rican economy uh, uh, before Hurricane Maria hit uh, the island. And then we're going to see the aggregate aggregate impacts to employment, and we're then going to use the advantages that using QWI data gives us to dig deeper and look at uh, different uh, employment trends by demographics, by industries, and the interaction of both. Right, so let me start with baseline uh, facts. Uh, these are pre-Maria uh, employment uh, uh, descriptive. Uh, I'm going to be uh, focusing on the second quarter of 2017, which was uh, 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 before Maria hit the, uh, the island. And here you can see the industry composition of Puerto Rico uh, across like aggregated uh, uh, NAICS uh, sectors, right? As you can see, you know, the uh, composition is uh, um, uh, heterogeneous. Uh, retail trade uh, accounts for about uh, 17% uh, of all employment in Puerto Rico. Um, 
and uh, extractive industries on the other hand, like mining, oil, and gas, only account for like barely uh, uh, one percent of uh, employment. How does this compare to the U.S.? Well, in this graph, I'm showing you again the industry composition of Puerto Rico in blue bars, and uh, the red uh, bars uh, show the industry composition in this particular quarter, 2017 Q2, for the uh, uh, entirety of uh, the U.S. And what you can see here is that overall, uh, uh, qualitatively, the shape of the distribution is similar. You have like a, 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 a a downward sloping uh, set of graphs, but there are important differences. For example, Puerto Rico, if you focus on the, uh, on the retail trade, Puerto Rico has a larger uh, share than uh, in employment in retail than uh, the U.S. Um, the same uh, story applies for manufacturing and uh, administrative and support services. On the, on the other hand, the U.S. has a higher share of employment dedicated to more technical or uh, technical industries such as uh, professional, scientific, and technical services, or uh, finance uh, and insurance. Right. Now, we can also uh, use QWI to look at the age composition of employment in Puerto Rico, again, for the pre-Maria uh, uh, quarter of 2017 Q2. And what you can see is that there's an inverse uh, U-shape in terms of the age distribution, right? The bulk of employment, over 50%, uh, is uh, composed by uh, workers uh, in the age range of, uh, of 25 to 44 uh, years old. Um, they account for over 50%. The second largest group is the above 45 group, which for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to be uh, referring to as the older workers. And the younger workers, those uh, uh, below 24, account for about 10% uh, of employment. How does this compare with uh, the U.S. as a whole? Well, the U.S. as a whole also has a similar pattern, an inverse U-shape. But what is noticeable by looking at the red bars, which uh, show the U.S. Uh, employment shares by age, is that this pattern is less pronounced. And by that, I mean that, yes, it's true that in the U.S., a majority of the workers are in the 25 to 44 age range. But on the extreme, you have that the uh, um, shares are much larger than Puerto Rico, right? So this is to give you a sense of how Puerto Rico employment looks uh, uh, relative to the U.S. and before the uh, hurricane uh, uh, hit the island. Now let's see at what happens after the hurricane uh, hit the island, right? Uh, and so let's start with the aggregate employment trends, right? Here in this figure, what I'm showing you is uh, the uh, uh, variation in employment over time. The x-axis is uh, a, quarter, uh, a, time series, uh, a time dimension based on quarters. And the uh, uh, y-axis is the uh, uh, employment, private employment in the island measured in uh, thousands, right? So you can see that uh, in the first uh, period of our analysis, 2017 Q2, uh, employment was about 660,000. Uh, and this declined as Hurricane Maria hit the island to reach a low point of about 633,000 workers in the first quarter of 2018. Uh, after the, uh, reaching this lowest point, employment started to recover. And by the end of this period, uh, meaning 29, uh, 2019 uh, quarter four, we had that employment actually had surpassed the pre-Maria levels. So, um, uh, in fact, by the end of this uh, pe uh, period, we had 35,000 more people employed in Puerto Rico than even before the hurricane hit the island, right? So this was, uh, 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 so uh, today we're going to be focusing on what is driving this, you know, employment recovery that you see in aggregate trends. All right, so we are going to be using, uh, and for that first, we're going to be using one of the advantages of QWI data uh, that allows us to look at uh, trends by uh, the, for different types of demographic groups, and I'm going to be focusing on age groups uh, for, for this presentation, right? So here I'm showing you a similar graph to what we had before, uh, showing employment trends uh, 
uh, the x-axis is uh, uh, time, the same time periods uh, measured in, qu in quarters. Um, very importantly, on the y-axis, what we have is uh, employment, but indexed to pre-Hurricane uh, Maria uh, levels, uh, to the levels of 20, uh, 2017 Q2. So all the trends and figures are uh, relative to what the level was at the beginning of the period. And also very importantly, what we're doing here is separating employment by different age groups, right? Uh, and in particular, we're going to be using the uh, age groups that I defined earlier, the younger, uh, uh, the younger groups, which are uh, the below 25 group, the middle age group, the red line with, uh, uh, who, uh, that includes 25 to 44 year olds, and the older group, the 44 uh, and above uh, group, right? So what you can see is that there are very, very uh, different patterns. What this graph is saying is that for young workers, you had a decrease uh, of about 5% uh, uh, relative to, to pre-Maria levels following the hurricane, but you also had a very strong recovery, right? Uh, uh, that culminated in 2019 Q4 with uh, an increase that was over 10% uh, above the initial levels in 2017 Q2, right? So relative to the beginning, uh, the primary levels, employment for those below 25 was 10% higher. Um, and the same thing applies for the other workers. That's the green line. There was a steady recovery, and it, uh, we end uh, in 2019 Q4 with a, a, a net 10% increase. On the other hand, what you can see with the red line, those in the middle age group, is that there was a contraction, again, by 2018 Q1, uh, employment for this group was 5% uh, lower than uh, before Maria, and this group quite never recovered, right? For most of these, uh, for of the next two years, they uh, stayed at below pre-Maria levels, and only in the, at the end of the period, in 2019 Q4, they went back to what is in essence uh, uh, the, uh, the same point where they were at the beginning of uh, 2017, right? Um, another way of uh, looking at this is that, remember that I told you uh, on aggregate uh, between 2017 Q2 and 2019 Q4, there, wa there were on net 35,000 uh, additional workers who were employed in the island. All of Practically all of these uh, gains of, uh, of uh, 35,000 uh, workers employed is due to this group, right? It's actually 96% of the employment of those like 35,000 uh, net gains are due to the above 44 and the below uh, 25 uh, age groups, right? Okay. And by the way, uh, I want to uh, emphasize that all of this is public information that uh, you are able to get uh, going to our QWI Explorer uh, website. Um, here, you know, just to give you a sense of uh, uh, how straightforward it is to get this type of information, you can just, you know, go to the website, select Puerto Rico uh, at the geographic level, your indicator, in my case, is uh, beginning of quarter employment, and on the uh, select the relevant x-axis, like uh, uh, quarters, a uh, group variable by age. And for uh, expositional purposes here, I just selected a few uh, age groups uh, uh, that, that go, uh, that can show you that, you know, even within narrower age groups, there was significant uh, differences in, in the evolution around, uh, of employment around this time period. We can also, use uh, our data, even QWI Explorer, to look at the long-term change in the uh, age distribution. And here what I'm doing is showing you the age distribution for quarter, uh, for two quarters. The first one is, oh, sorry, the first one is before uh, Hurricane Maria, 2017 Q2, and the other one is 2019 uh, Q4, that's two years uh, after Maria. And you can see here uh, with the uh, uh, bars side to side, the, green, the light green ones are the, the uh, uh, employment shirts for a, a, an age group corresponding to 2017 Q2. The dark ones are corresponding to 2019 Q4. And what you can see here is that, you know, if we call this medium or long term, like two years after, 
um, the age distribution of employment change, right? So you can see that on the uh, uh, left tail and the right tail, the share of those employed uh, in uh, Puerto Rico actually had increases, right? Especially for the 19 to 21, and the same thing applies for uh, the 56 to 60, 55 to 64, 65 to 99. And you can also see that in the middle of the distribution, right? Uh, the uh, uh, 25 to 34 and 35 to 44 age groups experienced a decrease in the share of employment uh, that uh, they accounted for. Right. So that's uh, so age distribution of employment change uh, across this time uh, towards the older and the younger uh, groups. Right. We can do some a, a similar study with uh, focusing on industries. Here I'm showing you, similar to the last graph that I showed you, the industry employment shares for uh, 2017 Q2, that's the blue line, and 2019 Q4, that's at the end of our study period, two years after the hurricane, in red. And what I want to, you to take away from this graph is that uh, there, uh, uh, there was heterogeneity or vast differences in the evolution of uh, industries across time, right? So the fact that on the on this left hand side we had the red bar uh, being higher than the uh, blue bar means that for these industries here um, there was uh, good performance. Basically, construction increased employment such that the overall employment share among, uh, uh, in construction increased from 2017 to 2019. Same thing for finance and insurance. So in essence, these industries grew. On the other hand, you have industries on the right uh, tail of this uh, chart that show that because the uh, shares, uh, the red bars are smaller, that means that the share of, for example, retail trade uh, um, actually decreased over the over the, this two-year period. The same thing for information and uh, educational services, and very importantly, agriculture as well. So let me uh, put this in more. Uh, um, easier thing, uh, terms to understand by just like looking at the evolution of some particular uh, industry. Here, what I'm showing you is uh, the evolution in employment for uh, industries that experience a weak growth uh, over this uh, time period. Uh, again, this is 2017 to 2019 Q4. Uh, everything is indexed to pre-hurricane levels. Uh, and what you can see is that very, a very salient feature is that for agriculture uh, and, and related uh, industries, there was a very sharp and immediate contraction after uh, the hurricane, uh, and it never quite recovered. So employment decreased uh, by over 20%, and even two years after the hurricane, it remained at, uh, uh, at uh, uh, down by more than 20% relative to where it was before the hurricane uh, hit the island, right? There are similar stories. The magnitude is not as uh, bad as, a, as in agriculture. I mean, 20% is a big decrease in, uh, in employment. Um, but uh, there are similar stories, uh, again, lower magnitude, for example, educational services, and the uh, experience a, a decline. and didn't quite recover, and in, uh, in uh, 2019 uh, Q4 at about 10% below the pre-Maria levels, uh, and similar stories uh, to, for retail trade and information. Um, on the other hand, we have this set of industries that actually performed really well over this time. Um, and in particular, for example, we have construction, right? Relative to pre-Maria levels, uh, it never had a big, uh, uh, um, uh, decline uh, after Maria, and in fact, it grew quite robustly uh, in the quarters that, that followed. And in this time period, with an increase of over 30 uh, percent in uh, employment relative to the, the level before before Maria. And similar stories apply to finance, real estate, uh, uh, and uh, transportation. Uh, now, what we are going to do is Thanks to the availability of both industry and demographic information in QWI, 
we can gain additional insights on what is driving these trends for uh, industries that, that gain a lot of workers. And that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to uh, look at industry by age trends. Uh, just for expositional purposes, I'm only going to be focusing on uh, particular cases, otherwise the graphs would be very, uh, very messy. So let me start by the most prominent uh, example, construction. I showed you earlier that overall uh, construction uh, in, uh, uh, employment increased by 30% uh, in, uh, during this time period uh, following uh, Hurricane Maria. Uh, what is possible to, look, to, to do with QWI is looking at employment in construction by different age groups. And here we can see very interesting patterns, right? Um, we can see when we divide uh, employment uh, age uh, workers into our standard three age groups, we can see that the group that experienced the highest growth was, uh, was composed of those workers below 25 year uh, old. So uh, at the end of the period, employment for this particular age, age group in construction had increased by, uh, uh, had, had almost doubled, right? An increase by 100%. Um, and the second largest group that experienced a growth was the uh, above uh, 44, right? Those, those other workers, the uh, middle-aged workers experienced some type of growth, uh, but it wasn't uh, quite as uh, strong. Remember, overall, construction grew uh, a lot, but it grew more for uh, uh, those below 25 and those above, uh, 40, uh, above 44. Right, and we can see this in our uh, uh, now familiar uh, age distribution, looking at you know only 2017 Q2 and uh, uh, at the, uh, before Maria and uh, 2019 Q4 after two years, and uh, look at different uh, ages. Right, remember the light green ones uh, are the employment shirts for a particular age group in 2017 Q2. The dark green ones are two year, uh, two and a half years after 2019 Q4. And you can see a similar pattern uh, consistent with what we just saw, uh, even when we disaggregate at more granular levels of uh, age groups, right? You can see big increases in the employment shares uh, over this time period for those uh, on the young uh, end of the distribution and also older workers. And in particular, you can see that uh, for construction, there was a big decline in the employment share of those that uh, were uh, 35 to 44, right? Uh, you can do this, you know, for every industry and each different type of uh, 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 age group, uh, 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 age group or, or uh, other demographic characteristics here. Just to reinforce my point, uh, I'm looking at another of the uh, high uh, performance or uh, high growth industries, uh, finance uh, uh, and, uh, and insurance. And we can see that, you know, the growth across ages is more balanced. Um, overall, uh, you know, all age groups uh, increase. Uh, um, uh, the younger group actually ended uh, the period being almost 50% above uh, the primaria levels. Uh, the second, the older group also had almost like a 30% uh, increase and the middle group still shows uh, 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 a significant growth, but it's uh, smaller than the other two groups, right? Uh, it's about a 20% growth relative to uh, 2017 Q2 levels. Uh, and this is again uh, reinforced by looking even at deep, uh, uh, more granular age distributions. Again, you can you, you see big increases in the shares of younger and older workers. And again, for this particular case, the 35 to 44 uh, age group is the one that had the largest uh, decline in the shares of employment in the finance industry. Right, so uh, uh, let me just conclude by giving you a, a, a summary of what I've shown you today. We use uh, QWI data, newly available QWI data, to show that, you know, as uh, it is relatively well known, employment in Puerto Rico declined uh, following uh, Hurricane Maria, uh, but uh, uh, it did recover by the end of uh, 2019, even adding uh, some uh, additional uh, jobs. Um, 
the, uh, the overall recovery in employment levels was largely driven by the youngest and the oldest workers. Uh, and very importantly, this recovery was uneven across industries. We saw that, for example, agriculture didn't do very well during this period, construction did. And think, thanks to the advantages of QWI data, we can, could gain additional insights into what was driving the growth in these uh, high performance industries like construction and finance. And we found that uh, they all shared that they experienced large increases in uh, the youngest and all, uh, in uh, the employment of youngest and oldest uh, workers. Um, and I just have to say that, you know, these uh, type of insights that are uh, very useful and just in general, the, the, the set of powerful tools that, that we uh, are able to uh, provide to, to the public are the result of uh, the collaboration between the Census Bureau and our local and state partners, in this case, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, so I think that's uh, all I have uh, to say for uh, today. Um, let me just leave uh, with you with some links, uh, the QWI Explorer, where you can access uh, uh, all, all of the data that was used in this presentation. Uh, and the America Counts story that came out in September that um, uh, discusses some of the results that I showed you today, my contact information, and the contact information of the um, uh, uh, QWI uh, team in case you have any feedback or specific questions about uh, the data and QWI Explorer. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to end. I think, uh, Arlene, if you can uh, take over now. I I'm ready for questions if there are any. Okay, thank you, Moises. Uh, before we get to the questions in the Q&A, the presentation will be accessible on the Census Academy website at census.gov slash academy under the webinar tab. Greg has added the link in the chat. And please type all your questions in the Q&A box. The chat has been disabled for our attendees at this time. So getting to the first question, uh, there was a comment. I hope um, they were able, there was an echo. So I hope that was resolved and we're sorry about that. Uh, the first question is in reference to slide number nine. So the question is, where is tourism captured? That is a large component of PR employment that was certainly impacted, correct? Is this included with retail? Um, I uh, have to say that I don't know uh, the uh, answer to that. I, I, I would need to check. Um, sorry. Uh, I would need to check, but um, maybe the easiest way to, to do that is by looking at QWI Explorer, um, and that would be something in at the three-digit uh, sector level. And we can try to find uh, tourism. Um, I'm sure part of it is uh, accommodation, uh, which is not part of. Uh, uh, um, there's a, a broad sector called accommodation and food services, which is not part of um, of that. Uh, uh, Sometimes what you could do also yeah. in the QWI is if you just put in the search, you know, keywords such as travel, accommodation, recreation, entertainment, uh, any words like that, that'll bring up the different uh, NAICS codes that are uh, listed in the QWI. Yes. Um, that's Yes, so uh, as the person who asked the question correctly uh, pointed out, there was a decline in accommodation uh, that uh, also recovered. Uh, they are not part of uh, retail. Uh, in fact, uh, I think 72 would be uh, part of uh, this accommodation and food services uh, sector. 
Okay. But it's something uh, definitely worth checking uh, in further analysis. Okay, great. The next question I have uh, relating to the employment rate of folks above the age 44, is there data by the island's geographic region? Thanks. So could you repeat the, the last part of the question? Sure. Uh -huh. It says, um, relating to the employment rate of folks above the age 44, is there data by the island's geographic region? Yes. So uh, QWI uh, Explorer uh, show, uh, includes information at the uh, geographic level, and that is something that from other uh, past studies, uh, uh, we know that uh, in, uh, different parts of the island were affected differently. Uh, that's not something that I've been done. Uh, uh, that's not something that I've done, but that certainly can be uh, done using QWI. Uh, and just, you know, as an offshoot, uh, the potential uses of QWI to look at so many different dimensions is very, very, very large. You can look on the demographic dimension to like not only age, but, but sex and uh, race and ethnicity uh, on the firm side. You can look at firm size, history, uh, effect by firm size, by, by firm age, also firm location. Um, and obviously the interaction of all of those. So the data is very rich there. I think in this uh, analysis, I just wanted to get one of the many, many different margins of analysis that you can uh, have. All right, and then again, the another question regarding the presentation, which will be on the Census Academy. Uh, please check there. And then another question is, hi there. I wonder if you will cover any migration data as well. For Puerto Rico, this is significant and would affect the composition of the labor force. Yes, uh, uh, very, very good point. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, I'm not covering that. It is difficult to get at uh, migration only, uh, and I'm assuming it means mig migration outside of Puerto Rico. Um, uh, what I can say is that, you know, we know that net mi migration increased uh, 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 following Hurricane Maria. There are other uh, census uh, studies using different data sets uh, that are more, uh, have, have advantages over QWI in that respect. Um, what I can, and that we cannot uh, incorporate here in, in, this, in, in this analysis, what I can say is that it's probably the case that the fact that uh, we see decreases in, in overall age distribution uh, for this particular middle age group is consistent with uh, a story in which uh, these middle age workers are uh, the ones uh, who are moving in larger numbers out of the island, right? And that would explain why we see these, these changes in, in composition over time. Uh, but again, that's not something that we can easily uh, address uh, uh, with uh, QWI alone. And then Moises, I'm sorry, this is a follow-up to the question and I'm not sure if you answered it. Uh, is there any correlation regarding the previous question about migration? I, I'm not sure I understand the, the yeah, maybe Which somebody can put that in the chat. So it was, so in the question was about uh, wondering if you will cover any migration data as well for Puerto Rico. Uh, this is a significant, would affect the composition of the labor force. And then the oh, question, the follow-up question was, is there any correlation? Uh, I think uh, you could definitely have a, a correlation. Uh, that's not something that we can establish just by, uh, using QWI data by itself, but it's certainly uh, plausible. Okay. Uh, next question is in reference to slide 27. Was most agriculture wiped out? Is that why it didn't do well? I heard in another brief that it may take hundreds of years for the rainforest to recover. Um, that is, uh, Certainly, uh, 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 
consistent. I, I've also read uh, 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 stories and, uh, and briefs that um, point to, that are you know, short term, not long term in nature, that point to the fact that agriculture uh, was literally wiped out uh, following Maria. I'm not sure I know of anything uh, how that relates to the recovery part, uh, but it's certainly possible. Okay. How do you measure employment in emerging industries? Those industries are part of the startup stage because businesses generate min minimal revenue. There is a lack of consumer base, the supply chain is underdeveloped, or the public is unfamiliar with the new product. Um, so I'll have to uh, defer that question. We're, we're using uh, the industries that are uh, specifications that are uh, given to us by the, uh, our state and local partners. Uh, and obviously there's some cleaning, but I'm, uh, I don't, we don't do anything uh, to significantly modify the industry classification that we're provided. Uh, um, so it would, uh, I guess this, this would need to be uh, routed to uh, definitely somebody who knows more about industry classifications uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how they are classified when uh, the states uh, and uh, local partners give us uh, the information. Okay. Will there be a comparison of variances between 2019 and 2021? It seems there is a tremendous demand on, of, for laborers who can't be filled. Um, I, I think, you know, it, it's, some, it's definitely uh, 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 possible to, to uh, you know, use the data to, to analyze other studies. If I understand correctly, uh, maybe the, uh, um, uh, the person asking the question refers to, to the, the pandemic. Um, uh, that's something that it's definitely, uh, Possible, it's not part of the scope of this uh, analysis, but uh, as we get more data, uh, post pandemic data, uh, uh, we, could, we could try looking at that angle. Okay, uh, next question is, as a Puerto Rican that survived Maria, it would be good to add the context that the island didn't have power or phone services for weeks, even months, and that affected work and school for a lot of us. Yes, that, that's uh, totally right. Uh, Maria had a huge devastating impact uh, across so many different uh, uh, dimensions and like this uh, um, uh, um, attendee uh, mentions that there was uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, in terms of power blackouts that affected a lot of the islands, uh, even any type of utilities like drinking water, like phone services, uh, things that we uh, take for granted, and that definitely plays into uh, 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 how we should uh, measure the, the recovery. Uh, um, here we're just looking at one of the many dimensions, which is uh, employment. Uh, okay. Uh, with regards to current employment levels, is there a similar impact of employment after the latest hurricane? And can it be expected to have a similar recovery? Well, that's something that is uh, very, uh, w will be in the future, a very good use of QWI uh, data. Uh, of course, we only have data uh, with a three year, uh, a three quarter lag, uh, which means that uh, uh, we'll have to wait probably a year to be able to make that assessment. Okay, another question is, it, it is no surprise the construction industry experimented growth given reconstruction efforts. Do you have a mechanism to find out how much of that employment is attributed to local businesses or it is artificially raised given the influx of construction firms from the U.S. immediately after the disasters? Um, that's uh, a great point. Uh, I don't, 
I am not aware of any mechanism that would be available to assess that within the QWI uh, framework. I know we have different types of ownership uh, 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 classifications, but I don't, I'm pretty sure they don't distinguish between uh, uh, Puerto Rico owned versus, uh, versus not. Um, uh, so both are uh, 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 real possibilities. Uh, and uh, I think, yeah, um, what, I, what we can say is like we have um, uh, a lot of people who are employed in Puerto Rico uh, uh, that uh, are in construction. And uh, either the firms can come from different places, the workers might have come from different places, uh, but of course we know that net migration to Puerto Rico is not uh, uh, very high. Okay, and then um, we have two questions, but it was relating to the migration and it, it looks like you answered her question. So uh, I'm gonna just skip over that one. And then the next question is, is there an API to consume this data? Um, I don't know I can uh, the answer to that, but maybe- I, yeah. I can answer yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> yes, so the QWI is, it does have the Census Bureau API. So the next question is, uh, uh, from the presentation, I understood that the Explorer may be able to track how specific changes in funding streams that expire at a given time affect the job market for a specific sector. Is that right? Um, I think uh, in order to, so QWI Explorer could help answering uh, those questions as long as uh, there is external information on uh, the funding streams, what sectors they uh, go to, and what the, um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming funding streams uh, refer to public money funding streams. Um, and you would also need to know what the expiration date is, right? So um, given if you had information like that, like I had information of when Hurricane Maria came to be, then you can look at what happens at that particular time to different uh, sectors. Yes. Okay, well, that was the last question. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out our webinar at this time. So thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. And thank you to Moises for his outstanding presentation. Those are some really great questions that uh, we had. So thanks for um, being so smart. <laughs> Moises, um, I hope that you can do another presentation in the future, especially looking at you know, the years to come. So this is the last webinar of 2022 LED webinar series. Uh, join us beginning in February for the 2023 LED webinars. And I just wanna say, uh, have a great Thanksgiving, uh, happy holidays and happy new year. And thank you for spending your third Wednesdays with us this year. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.